Hello friends, I have a book I wanted to show you. This is another book about seeds and about things growing. And you might recognize the name of this author, Eric Carl. And give me a thumbs up, boop, if you have read any Eric Carl books. I bet you know The Hungry Caterpillar and The Quiet Cricket. So this one is called The Tiny Seed. And it's just, it's so beautiful, just like all these Eric Carl books are always so pretty. So I thought we would read this one, and you can look at the illustrations as I read. It is autumn, and a strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than all the others. Can you point to that seed? Yeah. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? One of the seeds flies higher than the other. Up, up it goes. It flies too high, and the sun's hot rays burn it up. Ooh, look at that seed. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts, and this seed cannot grow. But the rest of the seeds fly on. The tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. So these seeds are traveling all over. Now they're flying over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. I love the colors. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry, and the seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low. Can you see the tiny seed is still on his journey? And the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seed falls gently down to the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed, but the tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Now it's winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they're going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still, and the mouse does not see it. Now it's spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. The birds fly by, the sun shines, the rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full, they start to burst open a little. Now they're not seeds anymore. They are plants. First, they send their roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up towards the sun and the air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed and it takes, here I think this is the weed. It takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of those small little new plants and that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It might be too late, hurry. But finally, it starts to grow into a plant. The warm weather also brings children out to play and they too have been waiting for the sun in the springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along and, oh, he breaks one. Now it can't grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. But what is happening? First there are footsteps, then a shadow looms over them, then a hand reached down and breaks off. Oh. It's summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on, it doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the water rains on it and it has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the houses and now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. Now it's autumn again. That's a fancy way of saying it's fall. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler. The wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along with bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all its petals and it sways and bends from the wind. But the wind grows stronger and it shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower, and this time the flower seed pod opens. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. It's 
And remember, that's how our story began, right? All the seeds were catching the wind and blowing all over. So that's the story of the tiny seed. And it's a wonderful Eric Carle story that shows us all about the path that seeds take and how they become a plant. Scientists, I hope you liked that one. And I'm excited to read some more to you soon. But I hope you liked this Eric Carle, the tiny seed. And I wonder, what is your favorite Eric Carle?